Okay, so into the aldehydes and ketones. It's it can be a little tricky um, to remember the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone because they are so similar. Um, an aldehyde has um, a carbonyl group with at least one hydrogen bonded directly to it. So the way I remember the difference is I look at the, the names, aldehyde and ketone. Aldehyde has an H in it, ketone doesn't. Aldehyde is the one where a hydrogen is bonded to the carbonyl carbon. And in, in a ketone it isn't. So that's how I remember it. Aldehydes have an H. So linear notations, um, this is when we're just trying to take it easy on ourselves on the computer. Um, CHO or RCHO. This is the functional group, CHO. This is a carbon, carbon that's bonded to hydrogen and the oxygen. Notice that this is different than the alcohol, which would be ROH or you know COH. So those are the alcohols. That's different. Here the H comes first. The hydrogen is bonded to the carbon, not the oxygen. Once you get the hang for hang of these linear notations, um, they're, they're really nice and convenient, but they can be a little confusing at first. Here, this R, remember R just stands for some hydrocarbon. So this is something bonded to this carbon which has a hydrogen and a double bond with the oxygen. We just kind of understand the double bond to the oxygen because we know that oxygen has to have two bonds and carbon has to have four. And so we, we look at that and we understand how they go together. So it really is a very shorthand way of indicating aldehydes. A ketone is a carbonyl containing carbon compound, but the carbonyl carbon has two other carbons directly attached to it. So this is the aldehyde functional group, and this is the ketone functional group. The difference here is on the ketone, this carbon on the carbonyl group does not have a hydrogen on it at all, and in the aldehyde it does. So linear notations for the ketone Maybe R C O R. This oxygen is bonded to the carbon, and this alkyl group containing carbons is also bonded to it. Or sometimes they'll say R two C O. This would be if those R groups are the same. They could be the same, or they could be two different R groups. So just another slide looking at the difference between aldehydes and ketones. This one on the top is an aldehyde. In an aldehyde, that carbonyl group has to be on the end because there has to be this hydrogen. It can only have that if it's on the end of the chain. It could be on this end or it could be on that end, but it can't be in the middle. With the ketone, the carbonyl group has to be in the middle. It could be on this carbon, this one, this one, this one, but it cannot be on the end carbon because then it would be an aldehyde. We can have cyclic aldehydes, but we can't have cyclic ketones. I'm sorry, backwards. We cannot have cyclic aldehydes because that carbon needs a hydrogen, but we do have cyclic ketones. So these are examples of cyclic ketones. Cyclic ketones are not heterocyclic ring systems. Cyclic ethers were, but cyclic ketones are not because we look at this at the ring and it's only carbon atoms. Yeah, we have oxygen double bonded to one of the carbons, but the ring itself is all the same atom, so it's not heterocyclic. I guess you could say it's homocyclic, but nobody ever says that. So this one has two ketone groups. Here's a five-membered ring. It's got a ketone group here and two methyl groups on it. Um, oops. I guess I didn't finish that slide. Let's just fix that real quick. At least make it a little better.
So we've seen these names, aldehyde and ketone, before because when we oxidized a, um, an alcohol, we got an aldehyde or a ketone depending on whether it was a primary or secondary alcohol. And you will need to know about the oxidation of alcohols for the exam. But since we hadn't studied aldehyde and aldehydes and ketones, I kind of left out the questions where it wanted you to say that, you know, primary alcohol gives you an aldehyde. I'm like, you know, let's wait on that until we actually know the difference between them. But an aldehyde, I'm sorry, an alcohol, if you lose these two hydrogens, then you create this double bond and you get this carbonyl functional group. If you lose two hydrogens from an alkane, you get an alkene. So taking away the two hydrogens forms that double bond. I don't know if there was anything else I was supposed to put on that slide or not. Um, so nomenclature. Let's start a new section.